Hey, it's Randy from Voices, and today we're covering everything that you need to know about using Pro Tools for voiceover. And because Pro Tools offers a free version of their software, it's not gonna cost you anything to get started. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is create a new account over at Avid. So I'm gonna go here and log into my account that I've already created. Once you've added the free version of Pro Tools to your account, you can go ahead and view my products here, and we need to download Avid Link. Avid Link is basically a software that runs on your computer and houses the licenses that you own for Avid products. Now, it is a free software, but you still have to have have Avid Link to open Pro Tools on your computer. But let's go ahead and open up Pro Tools. So this is the very first window that you'll see when you open up Pro Tools. And you can see we can set our session parameters here. And we can also label our sessions. We're going to call this demo for the purposes of today's demo. And we can also create and use templates, which we'll get into in just a minute. And down below, we have some additional parameters. So I typically recommend using Broadcast Wave as your file type. Sample rate 48 kilohertz is fine. Bit depth 24 bit is typically what we would recommend. IO settings, we're just gonna leave that the way it is for now. And we wanna make sure that interleaved is checked. Next, we'll choose a location, and I'm just gonna save this to my desktop for the purposes of today's demo, and we'll go ahead and create the session. Now, if you're totally new to Pro Tools and this is a totally new experience, this may be a little bit overwhelming to look at for the first time. Uh, there are two different windows that open up by default. There's the edit window, and then there's the mix window. And you can access these by doing command and plus which will toggle between the two windows. Typically, we're gonna be living in the edit window. This is where we'll be editing our files. The mix window for voiceover, we're gonna set up our mix the way we like it with the plugins that we like it, and then really never have to touch this window again. So let's go back to the edit window. Now, before we add any audio tracks or anything like that, or set up the rest of our template the way we want it, the first thing that we wanna do is go up to setup and then click on playback engine. And the playback engine is how we choose which device that we're gonna use. So you can see here, playback engine, and it's giving me a few different options so I can use use my uh, MacBook Pro speakers, I can use the display speakers that I'm using. I don't have an interface plugged in or a microphone plugged into my computer, but this is where you'd go to change to your microphone before setting up anything else. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Pro Tools Aggregate IO, but this is where you would put in your interface if you're using one. Below that, we have our hardware buffer size, and this is where we can set our latency. So 32 samples would be a very, very, very small amount of latency. 1,024 samples would be a very large amount of latency. We wanna put it as low as we can without our computer getting any hiccups or anything like that. So typically around 128, something like that should be a good place for minimal editing. Uh, but let's go ahead and press okay. The next thing that we wanna do is set up our IO. That means the ins and outs going into our computer and back out from our computer. So let's go ahead to set up again, go down to IO. Now this is where it's gonna look different depending on what equipment you're using. So let's go to the input section here and we wanna make sure that the input is set to our interface or our USB microphone, depending on what we're using. And we wanna make sure that our output is set to our interface or our USB microphone, depending on which one we have. So just make sure that those are set right and we can go ahead and press okay. Okay, now it's time to set this session up like a voiceover session, and then we can create a template from it and make tweaks down the road, but let's go ahead and create some new tracks to get started. So I'm gonna do Shift Command N to create a new track, and right now it's set up to create one new mono audio track, which is perfect, so that's our voiceover track. I'm gonna press Shift Command N again. It's gonna create a second track, and I wanna change this to a stereo master fader. Now to do that, I don't even have to use my mouse. I can hold Command and press right, which is gonna change it from mono to stereo, you can see there. Right and left goes back mono to stereo. You can even go to 5.1 if you have that option. And then I'm gonna keep holding command and press down and it's gonna cycle through the track types. Once we've got that set up, we can even name them if we want to. So I'll call this dialogue, not audio. And I'll leave the other one set as master. And we're gonna go ahead and click create. So the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that our microphone is set to the right input. So we'll come over here to the IO section Click that and you can see our microphones there under interface. Now, if you don't see IO or inserts right here, just go to this little drop down on the left side here, click that, and you can see all of the different options that you can add within this view. Now, I wanna make it as easy as possible to open Pro Tools and start my workday. So I wanna include anything in this template that I think I might use on a daily basis. So an EQ and a compressor, I'm probably gonna use those every day. So let's go ahead and add one to this session before we create a template with it. So I'm gonna go EQ and I'm gonna add one of the ones that comes with Pro Tools. So EQ, seven band. You can see I have more plugins than you might have in your Pro Tools, depending on how many third-party plugins you've purchased. Um, but that's okay. The default ones are totally fine to get started with. So we're gonna add the channel strip, which also comes with this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold Command and click on both of these. 
And you can see once they go blue, that means they're not even active. They're not costing any DSP from your computer. They're simply just sitting in the session ready to be used when you want to use them. So that's perfect. Okay, now we're all set up and ready to start recording. Now, a few people like to have additional dialogue tracks that they can record to. So I'm going to go ahead and click duplicate, maybe just add two or three more uh, tracks with all the same plugins and everything. And what I'm going to do is bring them down here below my master just by dragging them down. You got to click on the, uh, the title and drag down and I'm going to make inactive. So these are just sitting there ready to be used if I ever want to use them. They're just kind of nice to have. You can also import some music into Pro Tools and just have them sitting here if you want to use music to get yourself hyped up or to get in the right mindset for a particular read. So now we're all set up and ready to go to create a template from this. So I'm going to go up to file and save as template. And we're going to go ahead and put this in a new category that we're going to call voiceover. And the name of it, we're going to call um, voice over template. So now you can see when we open up Pro Tools, now we can go create from template and we'll change from getting started to voiceover. And you can see there is our voiceover template. So I'll click that and we can go ahead and change the name to today's date, whatever today's date may be at the time. And just like that, we have our session open. We have our dialogue track with our effects ready to record. We have some backup tracks ready to go, a master fader. We are all set to start our day of work with like three clicks. So templates are gonna save you a whole lot of time. And now you can name it by today's date or by your client's name or however you like to organize your own sessions. Now I've got my session set up with a very fancy microphone from my Apple earbuds ready to record just for the purposes of today's demo, but I can show you sort of how this works. So you can press the I here, which is input monitoring. and now I can actually hear myself I couldn't before but you can see it is input monitoring which is really really nice for playing back an existing part and then having input monitoring on there so you can hear exactly what you're doing and then I'm gonna go ahead and press record enable and when it's flashing it means it's ready to go I'll press enter so I know I'm at the beginning of the session and then three on the number pad which will start recording you can also start recording from up here on the transport as well but I'll go ahead and press three now I'm going to go ahead and record some dialogue and you can use option and mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So in and out with the mouse wheel, left and right will make the waveform larger or smaller. That's not actually changing the volume or amplitude. It's just changing the size of the display. And you can also uh, drag this to make one waveform bigger or option and click and drag to make them all bigger. Another tip here is let's say we're done and that's our whole voiceover. We're really happy with that. What we can do is click control option command and down and that's gonna stretch these out so they all fit onto the window. And then I'm gonna press option A. And what option A is gonna do is gonna stretch the whole window to the size of this clip. So if I press that, then we know this is the entire duration of that audio file. Up here at the top, we have a few different tools that we can use. So we have the trim tool, which is going to allow us to grab this and delete stuff that is prior. We also have the select tool, which would let you select a region and you can you know, delete it with backspace. We have the grabber tool, which lets you move things around. And then a couple other tools that aren't used all that often. The one I wanna pay attention to is this bar that goes above. This is called the smart tool. And I actually really prefer to work with smart tool because it actually utilizes all of those tools in one space. So if you go to the bottom half of the clip, it's grabber. If you go to the top half, it's selection. And if you go to the beginning, it is the trimmer tool. So this is really handy because you never have to change through tools. And then there are a couple little shortcuts that you'll wanna know if you want to get rid of all of the content before a section. So let's say I'm right here and I wanna get rid of all of this over here. I can press A. If A isn't working for you, it means that this little yellow button here isn't selected. So I can go ahead and delete this. Let's say I want to get rid of that. And let's say I want to get rid of everything after this bump there. I'm going to go ahead and press S. I can also highlight an area right here and press F to create a fade, which is a great key command, F for fade. It's very easy to remember. And I can fade out at the end as well. Now, editing in Pro Tools is really, really quick. So if I were to go through here, I can press Command E, and that's going to allow me to create cuts. So let's say I want to put a cut there, cut there, Cut right here, right here, and right there. And let's say I wasn't happy with any of the intersections, so I wanna get rid of that, I wanna get rid of that, and that. Now, you can press the little squiggle right beside number one, I forget what it's called, and change the mode over to shuffle. What shuffle is gonna let you do is grab a region and snap it back to the next one. And this can be really, really useful if you're doing a massive podcast where you need to you know, cut out section, 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 and then snap, 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 snap them all back. So that works really well. And then I'm gonna switch back to slip mode using that same key. And this will let you move 
regions freely. So what's really nice about Pro Tools is how clear the editing is. So let's say this first take here, I got to right here, started a phrase and then I messed up and I was unhappy with the ending of it. So I went back and started that phrase again. So I know that this peak right here and this peak right here are the same word. You can just drag this over and you'll see it does a really, really, really handy overlay. So you can line those up perfectly so that you can maintain the pace of your read. Then what I'm gonna do is zoom into that transition just a little bit, I don't need to get too detailed here, too surgical. And I'm going to drag this over right before that word starts. You can see there's a silence right about there. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the region and you see it turns into that crossfade icon. So I'm just gonna click and drag, create a little crossfade, and then that is gonna give me a really, really seamless edit between those two parts. So Pro Tools, I really love it because it is very, very detailed editing. Another thing that's really nice is that it's non-destructive editing. So when you're using something like Audacity, for instance, every move that you do writes that information to the original file. All of the information is saved in this clips window. So at any point, let's say I edited for an hour and something went wrong, I missed a whole section, I know that I can just drag one of these original clips down and it's gonna bring back all of that information that I've missed. It's all living in your session. And you can see if I go to the project folder where this session is, there's an audio files folder and there's complete audio files of all of the things that I've recorded in this session. Okay, and finally we get to exporting. So let's say that I am quite happy with this middle section here. This right here is what I wanna to send to the client. So I click on the back one or the front one, it doesn't really matter, but just click on one of them and then shift and then click on the end one and it's gonna give you that whole section. We could do what's called a consolidating. Um, I typically don't like consolidating unless I drag this to another session. I always wanna keep my edits the way they are, but let's go up to this one now and I'm gonna do shift option three and you see it turns it into one audio file, which is just really nice for organization. I'm gonna highlight that region do Option Command B for bounce, Option Command and B. Today's date, that's a perfect name for this project. We're gonna keep it as a broadcast wave. We're gonna keep this all the exact way it is. You're gonna notice it's going to the session folder to bounced files. So where exactly is that going? Well, that's going to our session folder to the bounced files folder. So it actually already creates a bounced files folder, which is so nice. So you always know where bounces of your files are. Unless you choose to put them somewhere else, you can always send them to a different folder or something like that. But this is really great. We have nothing in our bounced files folder yet, but as soon as I bounce this, we'll go ahead and click okay. It'll offline bounce, which means you won't hear it, but it'll bounce a little bit quicker than real time. And now if I go back to this folder, you can see I open up bounce files and we should have today's date. Now, one of the great things about Pro Tools and one of the huge advantages over other DAWs is that it's still recognized as one of the industry standards. Now, there are other DAWs that are creeping up and gaining reputation and popularity, but Pro Tools has been one of the industry standards for the past 30 years. And what's great about that in the voiceover industry specifically is that a lot of the clients that you're working for, ad agencies, production houses, large format studios, most of them are gonna be using Pro Tools as their main dedicated DAW, which just makes the communication and sessions a little bit easier for you. Anyways, that's it for our video on Pro Tools. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I am a diehard Pro Tools fan and I've used it for many years, so I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. As always, happy auditioning and we'll see you in the next one.